Good afternoon, everybody. As it is scheduled in our program, I am supposed to give uh, author notes about the book, which I have completed and successfully ended the writing of the books, a biographical book of General Kaito. So, I first of all address to my chairperson and respected Sri Dokhel Yaptomi, Member of Parliament, Lok Sabha, esteemed dignitaries, invited friends and family members. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to witness this launch book, the title of the book, The World's Youngest General. It is also to commemorate his death, which has passed 55 years by this year on 3rd August 2022. I once again express my sincere appreciation and gratefulness to our respective Member of Parliament, Lok Sabha, for his consent to release the biographical book of General Kaito Sakai. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone for giving meaningful time to this occasion with your thoughtful and warm presence. At the very outset, I give my humble gratitude to my Almighty God for letting my nephew, Mr. Kekaho Jimomi, the co-author of the book, to Come, successfully complete this journey of the book. Here, I have one request to be made to all of you. I may be permitted to speak out or to let you understand the cardinal point of the book which has been then pinned down here I would like to read out clearly and loud to all of you so that you are able to grasp the main points where I am trying to face on. Therefore, you may allow me to read out point by point. Firstly, I want to enlighten you and the title of the book, The Biographical Records of General Kaito, titled The World's Youngest General, is by its very title very provocative. And some may wonder why this was named. So, here I want to clarify when General Kaito made his trip to London and London the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC and Daily Herald London termed him as the world's youngest general and a born general. The They quote that at the age of 29 years, Kaito would be the world's youngest commander in chief. But if we go by records, General Kaito at the age of 23 has been officially appointed as the general commander in chief of the Naga National Army by the federal government of Nagaland on 22nd March 
1956, which such confirmation at hand, we have therefore titled the book as the world's youngest general. About the book writings, me and my nephew, Mr. Takao Jumomi, the co-author, we took around five years to complete this book. It is a simple, reader-friendly, bare accounts covering his journey from his death to from his birth to his death. The book contains 11 chapters. We are recounting many thrilling actions, such as the first Indo Naga battle, his heroic adventure, such as the first Indo Naga battle, his heroic adventure in London, where he met such impression on the international media about the Naga struggle, which until then was unknown to the outside world. The book is a narration of the extraordinary achievements of, his young, of this young general, which even worried and scared the Indian armies, that, he were, he, that they even called him the dare devil to General Kaito. The latter part of the book reveals his diplomatic relationship with the neighboring countries like Burma for building up for extension of operation, operational territory and China and Pakistan to seek armed aid. He begged to hold but back home, some people had misconception on him regarding the formation of army government. The book includes the clear story of his tragic assassination and death. The book is also Dedicated, dedicated to all the brave Naga patriots who had sacrificed their lives for the cause of the Naga freedom movement. It is an effort to record General Kaito's legacy for the generation to come. These records are more than half a century old. In this book, you will not only amuse the reader, but you will enlighten the younger generation. No part of the contents of this book is fabricated or overstated. It is but a serious presentation by the first-hand living witness and documental evidence, based on the life of the leader who gave up everything for himself for the cause of Naga freedom struggle. The Naga armed struggle is the mother of all insurgency movement in the Northeast India and also known as the longest insurgency armed struggle movement in Southeast Asia for the more than 70 years. The armed movement as launched by none other than General Kaito Sakai, along with some of his few loyalists, on 4th September 1955 at Hoshapur Kakia village, the battle, the battle took place. This is known as the first Indo Naga battle at Hoshapur village. General Kaito raised his band of gods known as Naga Sevgat so as to defend Naga people when the Indian paramedical forces or paramilitary forces began to 
torture and kill the innocent Naga's people, Naga people and committed atrocity towards Naga people indiscriminately. So, General Kaito raised his band to safeguard the people which gave birth to the Naga freedom armed struggle. In other words, what I would like to say, the very vanguard he named it was safeguard to save the people from the Indian torturing, atrocities, killings, and mere public. Therefore, he took up all by himself, raised an arm back. Now, however, the letter 60, letter 60, the disunity between the federal leaders reached in peak and the federal government of Nagaland became non-functional that it could not longer hold the Naga unity and consequently General Kaito planned a new strategy by his comrades but by his comrade mission to do his plan and he was assassinated. General Kaito in his dying bed with only me beside him. He clearly said this word to me, I caught. I love Nagas. I love Nagas. I sacrifice my life for the Nagas. But someone wanted to take my life away, and I am dying. My heart bleeds for the Naga, as I see more days of struggle for achieving the goal, killing among us. There will be split divisions and killings among us. I unquote. We believe that the selfless sacrifice and the crucial play, role play by him is certainly a major and a great contribution towards the Naga freedom movement. It is sure enough that he is an inspiration and shall be remembered as hero and a legacy to the Nagas, particularly to Sim in general Nagas, but particularly to Sim. Lastly, it is my desire that you pick up the book, sit back, and you will find the story of the extraordinary journey of life of the world youngest general. Thank you very much. In the name of the of Almighty God and in the presence of the family member led by Dr. Kohejimumi, well wishers, dignitaries, invitees. I take the opportunity to release the book won't let General Kaito sky. A captivity accounts of General Kaito sky's life. Formidable ruler in the capacity of the Army General in the history of 
naga freedom struggle book titled the world yankees general book is being launched today and in the presence of almighty god and all the elders i release this book on 14th of a uh, fourth of june 2022 I got an opportunity to release the book about the life of let General Kaito, the first General of Nagarmi. I'm not intended to speak since I have already released the book. But since this is an opportunity, I want to take one or two minutes. Naga struggle movement started way back 70 years and today we have only few of them who lead their freedom struggle and our struggle is with the government of India the leaders of Delhi and the people of Delhi they know about the Naga history <coughs> and when I became member of parliament way back 2018 July during parliament session and also 19th November, November during parliament session the Parliament Standing Committee on Home Affairs Chairman in person Shirin Chitrambaram, former Home Minister and also the Finance Minister has given the detailed account about the Naga struggle for freedom. Today we have released the book about the life of late General Kaito Sky, which is almost 55 years ago. This year, on 15th of August, Government of India is going to celebrate 75 years of independence. And the day of the government, they are making an attempt to have even one day session in the new parliament hall, which is still under construction. Almost 75 years ago, the present parliament hall was constructed by Britishers, where the construction started in 1926 and completed in 1932. At the moment, Lok Sabha has 543 members and Rajya Sabha has 253 members. Now the new building, both upper and lower house, sitting capacity is being increased. Upper, lower house, 800 capacity, 
and their upper house 400 capacity. Things have been moving in the last 75 years of Indian independence. And also things have been moving and changing in the last almost 70, uh, seven decades of Naga struggle. A lot of changes have taken place. Today, the advanced world, they say that we are living in a global village with scientific advancements. But although our struggle has been there for almost seven decades, I believe we still remain in the same position. And today, those of us who are here, we are recollecting how let General Kaito sacrifice his life for the Naga people. A killer should have, be, should have killed the General Kaito at all if he formed army government officially. But when the speculation was there, there they assassinated him. And today in person we do respect Shri Rotakai is here. The Nagas started Nagas divided since February, I should say February 1966. And division is still going on. Even today we talk a lot about political settlement. But still Nagas are divided. There is still hide and seek. Nothing is transparent. With my limitations, I'm in the parliament. I know exactly what is going on here in the state. But what is going what is being transpired in them? We call ourselves that we are Christian. And Christians are supposed to be very honest and faithful in our approach and in our day-to-day -day life. But sarcastically today I want to say, I think the Nagas became Christian when we didn't know anything. Since it's related to a great general, the world youngest general. I want to say that we have to uphold the legacy of let General Kaito and other great leaders within the Simi community as it is being done by some groups of our Naga people. But whether good or bad, history will remain. We cannot destroy the history. And we have a legacy to uphold our position. Therefore, I call upon the educated groups of people and the young people to go through this to go through this book and then emulate and also continue, continue to remember them, the sacrifices that they have made and in person let General Kaito. With these few words, once again, I want to thank Dr. Kohe Jimumi, the author of this book, and Kakao Jimumi, and also all the members present here today. Thank you.
time of writing this book. Number two would be my brother-in-law Dr. Chenje Konyak and my sister Ilika Jimomi for their participation was very instrumental. I would, number three would be my friend Mr. Vikashe Murumi for, she, for he constantly encourages me in my work. I would like to thank my friend Mr. Vitoko Naga and the entire media correspondent who are pledging the time to promote our books in the media. Then comes a brother, a friend and a writer, Mr. Anato Su, who was the key person that linked our manuscript to the international publishers. Next would be my brother and a writer, Mr. Pekinto Jimomi, who also communicated for us to the publishers. My earnest gratitude goes to my brother Lashka <coughs> Katoho uh, Zaka Nikto, my sister Kili, and my auntie Atoli for the logistical and moral support. My solemn gratitude goes to the Marys and Will International Publishers especially the Reverend Marius Will and his wife Marion from the United Kingdom. Uh, my gratitude goes to my brother oh, sorry I would like to I would like to give my earnest gratitude to the Marius and Will International's publication especially Reverend Maurice while and his friend Maru from the United Kingdom. It would be a failure on a part if we fail to mention if we fail to mention the contemporaries of General Kaito Sukai for they are the reason why this book is even possible. 
Although I could not mention them all, but I would like to name some of them in particular. They are Mr. Ho Pung Jim Chungur, Dr. H.S. Rotaka, Dr. Huska Yatomi, Dr. Uh, Aike Sema, Viko Ho Jimomi, Jenshe Ayemi, Viko Ho Jimomi, Atuli Sema, Dr. Hok Sheyep Tomi, Victor Ayemi, Kejeto Aomi, and Vitoli Hok She. Although I could not mention them all, but please forgive me. Regrettably, some of them have died during the course of writing this book and yearning to see the books being published. And I feel very sorry for them. But I have a firm belief that they all have left a rich legacy behind. And also this, is, this book is how we're going to remember them all. Above all, I would like to commit our success to our Almighty Father, who is the reason we have come this far. With this, I conclude my acknowledgement. Thank you all. Honorable Member of Parliament, Lok Sabha, for Nagaland, Sri Tuashaw Yaptomi, and his esteemed colleagues, most distinguished guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, greetings and love to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Anatosu Esinginaga from Saragatong, Zinogoro District, and right now it's a great honor for me to be here in Northern Ireland, home of Maurice Wiley Media. As a son of a freedom fighter father, El Atoisu, who sacrificed his 18 years serving in Naga Army, like many of you, I have heard and witnessed the struggle of our people. I grew up near realizing that another country half a world away had the same story as we, the Nagas. Northern Ireland also had a civil war, which Reverend Maurice will explain in his speech. While here, I have been honored to travel with him, and meeting senior figures in government, education department, ex-paramilitaries, also church leaders and the victims of their civil war. And in all honesty, I stand amazed in seeing how God works here. Before I invite Reverend Maurice Wally, who is the founder and managing director of Maurice Wally Media to deliver the publisher's note, let me first take this privilege to congratulate Dr. Kuhoi Jimomi and Mr. Kekao Jimomi on the release of their much-awaited book that records a lucid account of General Kaido Sukai and the life and struggles of our brave Nagar freedom fighters of their era. God bless you all. Thank you. Welcome, esteemed guests, to a book that not only records the life of one of the bravest generals ever walked in this world, but also gives detailed accounts of the Nagar freedom struggle during the initial years. For those who don't know, I'm the Reverend Morris Wiley, visionary, entrepreneur, and someone who hungers for reality of God. My wife is Maureen Wiley, also a visionary, who is passionate to see God move. Together we have visited your nation several times, meeting with people God has connected us to. The journey of my wife and I to Negaland never started with a plain journey, but with a dream that God gave my wife, of which God spoke about Negaland. Since then, our hearts burn for Nagaland, and it is our earnest prayer and hope to bring about that vision. Our first visit to Nagaland left a deep impression on us from every viewpoint, including your roads. I remember saying in the local church in Limpopore, "We love the people, but we hate your roads." <laughs> you see, your roads reminded me of our homeland. Not that our roads were ever as bad as what you have. But during our civil war, roadblocks would suddenly appear. Those would be government security forces or paramilitaries causing the drivers to swerve the cars. Or within towns, large craters on the road, when a car bomb would explode many times without warning, murdering innocent people. I was born and raised in the midst of this civil war, what is known throughout the world as the Troubles. A civil war that lasted for 30 years, killing thousands and maiming many thousands more. The IRA had waged a vicious evil war, where even some of my friends were murdered. In 1998, 
after talks between opposing parties and with the population of Northern Ireland voting for peace, a peace agreement was signed. A generation was to be born that would not witness what I had seen. A new day had dawned, and with that political and paramilitary leaders' mindset had to change. A place once renowned for violence and murder is now listed as one of the top tourist places in the world. The biggest IT firms had set up in our capital. Our film industry is second in the UK outside of London. Imagine a place where 30 years ago never had a tourist, never made a film, had no outside companies and now only God can bring such a change. But that change comes with a new mindset starting with our mind. One thing we learnt, when a country has been in war, poverty comes with it. Remember, one cannot be at war and prosper. When I read the manuscript of the general story, I also saw a man who loved Negaland in life and in death. Yet I also saw a man who thought outside the box. And we need to continue to live his legacy, to live outside the box in earth thinking and to see Negaland prosper. Any good father or mother will surely want one thing for their child, that their child will not have to suffer, go through the same pain, fight the same battles as their parents. The general's child was Negalan. He thought for its time to come when peace and prosperity would not just be prayed for, but be entered into. We at MWM believe with all our hearts that God has a plan for Negalan, but as scripture clearly teaches, God's plans are fulfilled through his people. In other words, God looks for a person and then works through them. Esteemed guests, it is impossible that one of you would be able to walk again in the steps of the world's youngest general and lead your people into a future of life and not death, prosperity and not poverty, righteousness and not evil. We believe if God can take a person like me and teach me how to listen to his voice more than my own, then surely he can do the same for you if not more, even through you. Let this not be a launch of a wonderful book to honour the general, but the launch of a new day in Megalan. Last but not least, I and my wife and our team congratulate the authors on the world's youngest general. Thank you for your time. I would like to pray in Simi Naga Island. To see you and New no あかやばったしずな。ばえんなかんこれもの。ばくつでけ。いえ。長に貸すであきょろの。長に。か、か、かっとしんじゃおの。ばくつで。おい、ふるほ。あっこでばいおの。あっこぶらけなわい。かけじいろ。
Nagan Kunopalakrejena, <laughs> The book release of uh, late General Kaido, who is termed as the youngest general in the Naga Army. He has uh, given his life and though it was long overdue, I'm very happy today that the book has been released, which will be a source of inspiration to the younger generations to come and also to be a beacon of light to all the Nagas that uh, revenge cannot bring any solution but truth will always prevail and uh, I just hope that many will benefit the rich heritage and legacy of the late general. With this words I'd like to conclude. Thank you. I've come here for the launching. I'm here to read the book but having got the gist of what the author said, it sounds interesting and of course it's time for us also Nagas to tell our story and this is one of the story of a remarkable leader, of a remarkable commander of a remarkable strategist whom we lost early in life. So I'm happy here and then uh, once I read the book, I'll be able to give more a review of it.